Hello, welcome to the next section, Introduction to Rust and its Ecosystem. This section is a very high level overview of the language and some of its most distinctive features. Now we start with the first video, Getting Started with Rust. We'll first learn about the Rust ecosystem. The success or failure of an open source project is often determined by the strength of the community around it. Having a coherent ecosystem helps in building a strong community. Since Rust is primarily driven by Mozilla, they've been able to build a strong ecosystem around it. The primary components being Source code Rust hosts all the source code in GitHub. Developers are encouraged to report bugs and submit pull requests in there. Compiler The Rust compiler is named Rust C. Since Rust follows semantic versioning for compiler releases, there cannot be any backward incompatibility breaking changes between minor releases. To facilitate adding new compiler features without breaking existing dependent libraries, Rust releases new compiler versions in stages. At any point, three different versions of the compiler and the standard library are maintained. The first one is called Nightly. As the name implies, it's built each night from the tip of the source tree. Since this is only tested by unit and integration tests, this release often has more bugs in the real world. The second stage is Beta, which is a planned release. By the time a nightly has reached this stage, it's gone through multiple rounds of unit, integration and regression testing. Once everyone is confident about the release, it's tagged as a stable release and pushed out. Installation Mechanism The community-supported installation mechanism is via a tool called RustUp. This tool can install a given version of Rust along with everything needed to use it. Package Manager Rust's package manager is called Cargo, while individual packages are called crates. All external libraries and applications can be packaged in a crate and published using the Cargo CLI tool. A user can use it to search for and install packages. The Rust toolchain installer is available at this link. For the examples in this course, we'll use a Linux machine running Ubuntu 16.04. While most of Rust should not depend on the OS, there can be minor differences. We'll point out any strict dependencies on the OS. Move to root first. Enter the curl command with this link. Let's wait till the installation is complete. Type 1 to proceed with installation by default. Rust is installed successfully. Now go to home.cargo.env. Then type in the next command, nightly beta. The installation will be done one by one. After that's done, we'll need to put cargo's bin directory in our path by editing .bashrc. Come out of root and enter this command. The next step is to set up a Rust project and run it, all using Cargo. Move to root again and run this command. Cargo is currently not installed, so first install it. Cargo is now installed. Now we run the previous command again. This tells Cargo to set up a new project called Hello Rust in the current directory. Cargo will create a directory of that name and set up the basic structure. Run the command tree hello dash rust. Tree is not installed either, so let's install it first. Again, run the command to create the tree. Since the type of this project is set to be a binary, Cargo will generate a file called main.rs, which will have an empty main function, the entry point for the application. The other, default, option here is that of a library. In this case, a file named lib.rs will be generated. The file named cargo.toml has a bunch of metadata for the current project and is used by Cargo. All source code is located in the source directory. The project can then be built and run using the cargo run command. Note that this command should be run from the hello-rust directory that Cargo created previously. We're getting an error. The directory cannot be found. So we've gone to root and we've checked if we have the hello rust file. So we have it here. Run the cargo run command again. We get the output, hello world. 
Run this command. We're getting an error to open the directory. We run it again. Interestingly, this command modifies the directory quite a bit. The target directory contains compilation artifacts. The structure of this is heavily platform dependent, but always includes everything necessary to run the application in the given build mode. The default build mode is debug, which includes debugging information and symbols to be used with a debugger. Cargo also generates a file called cargo.lock that has a snapshot of everything needed to run the application in a consistent manner. This file should never be edited manually. Since Cargo caches all dependencies locally, subsequent invocations do not need internet access. A packaged Rust application is called a crate. Rust crates are published to crates.io. Once published, anyone can use the web interface or the Cargo CLI to search for crates. This operation needs a working internet connection so that Cargo can communicate with crates.io. This is the output that we get. Now, say we want to use the term crate in our application. We'll need to edit the cargo.toml file and include it in the dependencies section. For that, we go to cargo.toml file and edit it. We change the author name. and under Dependencies, add the term as shown. This particular crate helps in formatting terminal colors. Using this crate, we'd like to print the words Hello and World in green and red, respectively. To actually use the crate in our application, we need to modify the main.rs file, as shown. The code is a simple program that prints the string Hello World on the screen. Further, it prints Hello in green and World in red. In Rust, each application must have a single entry point called main, which should be defined as a function that does not take in parameters. Functions are defined using the fn keyword. The phrase extern crate term tells the toolchain that we want to use an external crate as a dependency of our current application. Now, we can run it using Cargo. It automatically downloads and builds the library we need and all of its dependencies. Finally, it calls the Rust compiler so that our application is linked with the library and runs the executable. Here we get the desired result with hello in green and world in red. Cargo also generates a file called cargo.lock that has a snapshot of everything needed to run the application in a consistent manner. This file should never be edited manually. Since Cargo caches all dependencies locally, subsequent invocations do not need internet access.